an honor for me to be here and to offer some remarks at this important event. Today we celebrate the 100th anniversary of Naftem Boriki, which laid the foundation of economic journalism in Greece. Its establishment back in 1924 um, came after a period of considerable turbulence associated with the Asia Minor catastrophe two years earlier. During that time of deep crisis, refugees and displaced businessmen came to Greece and started to make substantial contributions to, um, to its economy. Industrialists, merchants, artisans, craftsmen, shipbuilders and bankers all breathed a new life into Greek entrepreneurship. The topic I want to discuss today is closely related to that spirit of renewal, entrepreneurship, innovation and productivity. And these themes are also encapsulated in, in, in the title of uh, today's conference, The Productive Greece in the Next Decade. As the Greek economy recovers from the turbulence of the past decade, this is a good moment to take a longer term perspective and to reflect on how to sustain the favorable economic performance that we've seen in the past few years. Education, innovation, and more generally high quality institutions are essential for productivity, employment, and welfare. And that's the key message that I want to convey today. Now let's begin by examining the broader Euro area context. Since the mid-1990s, productivity growth in many Euro-area countries has lagged, sometimes significantly, that in other advanced economies, such as the United States. As Mario Draghi highlighted, and Governor Stunas just mentioned it as well, in his recent report on European competitiveness, there are several factors that contribute to this trend. One key issue is excessive regulation that hinders flexibility, investment, and innovation. Europe largely missed out on the, digital, uh, on the digital revolution. While the United States capitalized on its high-tech sector, many of Euro area's more, most productive frontier firms are concentrated in mid-tech sectors with limited potential for productivity increase. In addition to that, there's been a secular decline in business entry rates and winner-takes-all dynamics of new technologies have reduced competition limiting the process of creative destruction that is essential for productivity growth. Business dynamism is suppressed by complicated regulations and overlapping governmental institutions and tax systems, both national and EU levels. And that stifled the creation of innovative firms and the reallocation of resources to the most productive sectors. And that, in turn, undermines com uh, productivity growth and competitiveness. As ECB Vice President de Guindos recently said in a speech, the key to Europe's success lies in leveraging all aspects of EU collaboration and coordination, including the completion of the single market. In addition to such Europe-wide initiatives, it is also important to recognize that most structural, fiscal, and financial sector decisions that support innovation and productivity and job creation are under the responsibility of national governments. Okay, let's take a closer look at the experience of Greece within this broader European context. Many of the points I've mentioned will resonate here in Greece. At the moment, the mood in Greece is notably more optimistic than in much of Europe. And for good reasons. Greece has made an impressive comeback from the pandemic and its earlier economic crisis, supported by the Next Generation EU program, for example, in the last few years. Remarkably, real GDP per capita in Greece is now something like 10% above its pre-pandemic level, showcasing a much stronger performance than the Euro area as a whole. With this robust economic resurgence, Greece has also made significant strides in addressing its debt challenge. Public debt to GDP ratio has dropped some 45 percentage points from its peak of 207% in 2020, which is one of the fastest declines in the world. The banking sector, once burdened with non-performing loans, has successfully offloaded most of these and is now profitable again. And all these efforts 
uh, have also benefited from persistent efforts by, um, uh, by, by the Bank of Greece, by the single supervisory mechanism. Greece's economic achievements have not gone unnoticed beyond its borders. Rating agencies have upgraded Greece, uh, Greek government bonds to investment grade. Uh, we have relatively moderate spreads on Greek government bonds that illustrate the confidence that international financial markets have in Greece and in Greece's economic policies. Furthermore, Greece is repaying its debt to official EU creditors ahead of schedule, underscoring its commitment to fiscal responsibility and economic stability. To solidify the benefits of Greece's economic achievements, the focus must be on increasing productivity. Currently, GDP per capita, which is a very basic measure of productivity, remains around two-thirds of the euro area average. This productivity gap is closely linked to weak investment, a challenge that Greece has to overcome to ensure sustainable growth. The severe economic crisis of a decade ago had a profound impact on Greece's productivity, leading to a dramatic contraction in both public and private investment. While fiscal consolidation was necessary to address fiscal imbalances, it inevitably constrained public investment in critical areas, such as infrastructure and education. This is also a key lesson for the future. But Greece's productivity challenges extend beyond the recent crisis. The country has many small firms, as you all know, with a limited capacity to adopt new technologies, innovate and grow. Approximately half of the workforce employed is employed by firms with less than 10 employees. That's the highest share in the euro area. Historically, Greece has also had a highly regulated product, product and services markets with significant barriers to entry. And it is that combination of small firms lagging in productivity and weak business dynamism that stifles innovation and productivity growth. Another critical issue is the availability of labor with the right skills. In Greece, indicators of skill mismatches are more pronounced compared with other Euro area countries. Despite a favorable growth performance in the past few years, the unemployment rate remains around 10%. That's relatively high. Higher skill levels in the workforce are essential for enhancing productivity as they enable more efficient, innovative and higher quality production processes. And as the working population, the working age population is set to decline over the next few decades, the pool of skilled labor will diminish without policy action. That also highlights the need to boost participation and employment rates among women, young people, as well as to attract and maintain labor from abroad to cover existing labor and skill shortages. Now, how can these challenges be addressed? Let me mention three points, and then I'll conclude. I see three mutually reinforcing factors as critical. First and foremost, education and skills are the bedrock of any thriving economy. For Greece to bridge its productivity gap with other European nations, it must invest heavily in human capital. A well-educated and skilled workforce, including digital skills, is more innovative and adaptable to the ever-changing demands of the global economy. In addition to that, a skilled workforce attracts foreign investment. As companies seek to operate in regions where they find qualified talent to drive their business success. Second point, equally important, is the role of regulation and competition in fostering a productive economic environment. Simplifying or removing costly regulations and reducing bureaucratic hurdles will create a more business-friendly landscape encouraging entrepreneurship, investment, and good jobs. Such a dynamic environment not only benefits consumers through better quality and lower prices, but it also drives overall productivity. By implementing regulatory reforms, promoting fair competition, Greece can create a vibrant economy where businesses thrive and contribute to prosperity. Greece has already gone a long way in simplifying regulation and digitizing processes. But there's still scope for further improvement. Third point, final point, 
access to finance and capital markets are crucial for unlocking the full potential of the economy. Greece's financial system is predominantly bank-based, just as Europe in general. But financing young, high-risk firms can also benefit from other sources of financing. During the scaling up phase of companies, of young companies in particular, innovative companies need to access, need access to risk capital and investors with the networks, the experience, and the risk tolerance. That also generates investment. An influx of investment not only stimulates economic activity, but it also creates a more resilient and diversified economic landscape. In conclusion, a hundred years ago, a visionary group of entrepreneurs laid the foundation for Naft and Goriki, bringing fresh perspectives that invigorated the Greek economy with renewed dynamism. Today, today, Greece is emerging from yet another turbulent period, bolstered by impressive reforms carried out under challenging circumstances. Although Greece continues to face structural economic problems, there are compelling reasons for optimism, in my view. Despite a series of setbacks over the past decade, the resilience and recovery in Greece have been nothing short of remarkable. It's not just the economy that has shown resilience. It's the strong spirit of the Greek people and a commitment to turning the page. The Greek experience stands as an inspiration to all of us in Europe as we tackle our own competitiveness and productivity challenges, many of which mirror those faced by Greece. It exemplifies resilience in the face of adversity and a changing economic environment. I extend my heartfelt congratulations to Naftem Poriki on its first century of existence. Sincharitiria yatim proti ekondaitia sas. Here's to an even more successful second century. Thank you very much.